Hi, and welcome to Coding TensorFlow, where you'll learn all about coding machine learning and AI apps using TensorFlow. I'm Lawrence Moroni, a developer advocate for TensorFlow, and today I'll be looking at TensorFlow Lite and getting it to run models on iOS. TensorFlow Lite is a lightweight solution for mobile and embedded devices. It lets you run machine learn models on mobile devices with low latency quickly, so you can take advantage of them to do classification, regression, or anything else you might want without necessarily incurring a round trip to a server. It's presently supported on both Android and iOS via a C++ API. And today, we're going to take a look at an iOS app that uses this API in Xcode. Here you can see me playing with an app on my iPad, and I'm using it to classify a number of objects. It's a lot of fun to play with, and note how the interpretation of objects changes as I move the camera around. It thinks my phone is an iPod, for example. It does a great job at detecting a mug, but it thinks my smartwatch is a digital watch. Well, why is that? Well, that's because this network is trained on a limited number of items. It will see any phone as an iPod and any watch as a digital watch. The nice thing about it, though, is that nets like this can be retrained. But for now, let's just stick with this one. So how does all of this work? First, let's talk about the model. The app is using a mobile net model, and mobile nets are small, low latency, low power models that are designed to meet a number of use cases, such as object detection, face attributes, fine grain classification, and landmark recognition. What's nice about them is that there are a number of different ones that are pre-trained, including the set at this link, which works for image classification, and it's compatible with TensorFlow Lite. Download that file, and you'll unzip it to see two files, a .tf Lite file describing the model and a labels file describing the labels that it's trained for. As you can see, because your model is already in the .tf Lite format, it's ready to be run on TensorFlow Lite. So let's take a look at the APIs for that. In fact, though, I would recommend that you stick with these pre-built models for the time being. As TF Lite is a developer preview, it doesn't support all the operations of TensorFlow yet, and you might encounter some issues with unsupported ones when you're converting your model to the TF Lite format. OK, let's get down to looking at it on an iOS mobile now. Before you can code the app, you'll need the universal iOS library for TensorFlow Lite. You can build this yourself, thankfully, from open source. And if you don't have Xcode already, you'll need to go ahead and get it from the App Store. You'll also have to install and run Xcode for the first time. You need to do this to agree to the license before you can use any of the Xcode tools, including the command line tools. Go ahead and get that done. I'll wait. OK. You'll also need to install Homebrew, which you can get at the URL brew.sh. This is a pretty neat package manager, and you're going to use that to install Automake and LibTool. And when they're done, there's a script in TensorFlow that you can run, which does all the building. It's going to take a little while. So sit back and have a coffee while you're waiting. Once you're done, you can go to the examples iOS camera directory to find the source code for the sample app that I showed a moment ago. Don't forget to run pod install in that directory before you continue. Once you're done, you can now load the code into Xcode, and you can run it. Do note that you will need an iOS device to run it on. It doesn't yet work in the simulator. In Xcode, if you open the Project Navigator, you'll see a data folder. This contains a TF Lite file containing the model and a text file containing the labels. It probably has the quantized version of the model, as you can see from the quant in the file name. You can replace these with the model and labels that you downloaded earlier, or if you like, just keep them the way that they are. Open the camera example view controller.mm file, and you'll see some constants at the top of the file which specify the name of the model and labels to load. If you've changed it, you'll need to update these. To use TF Lite, you'll need an interpreter, and this can be loaded from the API as an interpreter object. To this, you'll input details of the captured frame, and it will output a set of probabilities whether or not it sees something that matches each of the possible labels. Let's take a look at the app again. And here you can see I'm looking at a mug. But it's giving me back a couple of labels, one's for a mug and one's for a cup. Well, what's actually happening here? The app is capturing frames from the camera and feeding them one by one into the interpreter. The model that's loaded is a 224 by 224 one, so the images will first get resized to that with this code. 
The interpreter then outputs a tensor containing all of the results. And this will be an index of all of the labels with an associated probability. The getTopN function is a helper function which pulls out the top few of these. I put a breakpoint on there to show what happens with the output. Here you can see that the top value when I pointed the camera at the coffee mug was, the interpreter gave me back a 74% probability that it was the object at label 505. And if you look at the list of labels, you'll see that the 505th one is a coffee mug. It shows us 506 because when Xcode prints out the list, it starts at 1, but the in-memory one starts at 0. It's still a coffee mug. So that's a starter in TensorFlow Lite for iOS. This exciting technology will let you load your models onto a device, taking advantage of onboard hardware, and allow you to execute them. I showed an example using image recognition in a video stream, but of course you're not limited to that. At the moment, TensorFlow Lite is in developer preview, so remember you may encounter some restrictions using the TensorFlow APIs that are not supported, but we are updating them all the time. Finally, if you want to learn more, including how to retrain the model I showed in this video to tailor it for specific scenarios, check out the TensorFlow for Poets code labs on the Google Developer site. I can't wait to see what you build on mobile with TF Lite. And don't forget to hit that Subscribe button for more great Coding with TensorFlow videos. Don't forget to click the Subscribe button for more great videos like these ones.